Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a new kind of flower that we've never done before and also a new kind of butterfly. We're gonna put it on a sign. It's gonna be absolutely adorable. I promise you, you're gonna want to get out your glue gun, some fabric, some polyfill and make <laughs> one of these today because it is that uh, cute. So. I'm going to show you start to finish how to make something like these. I'm going to put them away. Um, stay with me to the very end because I'm going to show you what the little secret is that makes that butterfly so adorable. And um, yeah, as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle all that usual stuff. Okay, so we're using a lot of different things today. And I'm gonna just quickly go through that and then we'll jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna be using some of my favorite canvas duck fabric. Mine uh, came from the fabric department at Walmart, but you can get this stuff anywhere. It's kind of a thick fabric and this is sort of a oatmeal-y, creamy color. We're gonna be using that. We're gonna be using some polyfill or you could use it inside of a pillow. Um, we're going to be using this Waverly chalk paint, which it's acrylic paint actually, and the color is called Plaster. It's from Walmart. It's not expensive. We're going to be using some of these little wood rounds, which you can get at Magnolia DIY, and when I'm all finished, I'll get you guys all the links. We're going to be using some of these awesome ink pens. The ink ones are the black. These are also from Magnolia DIY, and you're gonna want a set of these. If you haven't already gotten one, you're definitely gonna want a set of these by the end. Um, so the ink are the ones that have the black body. Then we're gonna be using this big uh, MDF sign that's this really cute shape. And I have some five and a half inch wide burlap ribbon from Walmart, my hot glue gun. Oh, um, a little teeny bit of wire. This is just crafting wire. You can use whatever you have. This happens to be copper. I'm using what I had on hand. What else? Well, if there's anything else that we'll be using, I'll tell you about it along the way. Okay, so let's start first with the sign and then we'll start on the flowers. And the thing that I love about these flowers, well, I, first of all, I hope you guys aren't getting sick of flowers because that is my thing. Here at DIY Dreaming, I do a ton of projects that involve faith, family, and then DIY flowers. Um, but I think, I think you're gonna love this new kind of flower. Anyways, um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so we're gonna start with the sign so that that can be drying, and then we'll jump right into the flowers. Okay, before I came live, I painted one side of this MDF cute, it's a darling shape, little sign. Um, and you can get this also from magnoliadiy.com and at the end I'll give you an exact link to this so you don't have to hunt it down. So I painted two coats of this Waverly chalk acrylic paint in plaster. And then I used a little bit of clear wax on it just so that when we stencil it, um, we'll get a good crisp impression. So we're gonna do the stencil first, so it can be drying while we start assembling some of these adorable flowers and the butterflies. All right, and I am going to use this stencil right here, which is also from Magnolia. Um, and it says, bloom where you are planted. And then down below it has all these cute little flowers. This is an adorable stencil, but we're only using the words for this project. And while I'm doing that, I wanna just share a couple of thoughts from a faith perspective as to what bloom where you're planted can mean. So I'm going to take it off of the backing that it's on, and I am going to fuzz it. You could do that on a t-shirt, on your jeans, on a thin tea towel. Um, I think I've used this stencil maybe three or four times. They're reusable, it's still pretty sticky. So just to be sure that I don't pull anything up when I take it off and I don't stretch it, I'm just going to fuzz it. 
and we're going to be putting this sort of off to the side because we're going to be attaching our flowers to this. Oh my gosh, and it is so absolutely adorable. You are going to just buy. Okay, so these are adhesive. They're mesh. They are stretchy. They're reusable many, many, many times. They're great. And I wanted to use a color today that I don't use very often of chalk paste. Uh, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if it's currently in stock, but um, if it is, I would, and you want to do this project, I would grab some. And um, if it isn't, you can use black or gray or any color you want. This is called Irish Cream Chalk Paste. It's also from MagnoliaDIY.com. And it's sort of this color. I don't know how to describe it. It's sort of a gold mud color. All right, and I want this to be sort of straight, which I think it is, good enough, okay. So I'm just gonna take a little squeegee and pick up some of this chalk paste. And I'm just doing the words, we're not doing the whole stencil. So I have to pay attention. So, uh, before I came live, I was looking to see, that was my wonderful son, Noah, calling, and he didn't know that I would be live. Um, so I was looking to see, because you know, I, could, I couldn't remember, is this a Bible verse? I know it's used in a lot of faith um, instances, and um, no, it's not, a, it's not from a direct Bible verse, but... It is, um, the idea is taken from a verse in Jeremiah, and I'll, as soon as I pull this off, we'll talk about that real quick. And I think the sentiment behind it is really good. If only I could always remember to do what it says. Okay, so hopefully this will look good. Perfect. Bloom where you are planted. Hang on and I'll lift that up to show you. Okay, so this, um, this thought of blooming where you are planted can have three different sort of connotations to it. One is for us to be all that God made us to be, which is great. Another is that we make the best of what we have and the situations that we're in, to make the best of what we have. And the third one was to do what's right, even when it's hard. So um, in Jeremiah, I just got my Bible out real quick so I could just read this to you. It's not long. Um, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 through Eight, okay? It says, But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him, the Lord. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots to the stream. It does not fear when he comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. So, um... That's just kind of telling us to, you know, sink our roots into God and his word, and then trust God. Um, trust that you are where you are for a reason, and the things that you're facing, you're facing for a reason. Um, be all that God intended you to be, and um, do what's right, even when it's hard. So that's kind of what this phrase, bloom where you're planted, means. Like, bloom wherever you're planted, amidst whatever is going on in your life. Okay, so I'm gonna set this back here so it can just dry, and let's start with the flowers. Okay, before I came live, I made some patterns using computer paper, and there's absolutely nothing specific about 
this, these are the large petals that I drew, and I'll tell you how long they are. Uh, they are three and a half inches long and about three inches wide. And then after we do that, we'll do the butterfly, which is so, so, so adorable. Okay, so why would I cut out one petal at a time? It's going to take two, a front and a back, and then we're going to stuff it. But why would I do one at a time when I could do more than that? So I'm going to show you how you can do more than one uh, at a time. So I'm just folding my fabric. Let's see, I think we'll do it. Here. And then I'm going to fold it again. So I'll be cutting out four thicknesses of this petal. I'm just using a, a pin to tape it, to hold it on there. Okay? And I'm getting my good scissors. All right. These flowers, oh my gosh, there's so many different things that you could do with them. Um, you could stencil the petals if you had a stencil that you loved, like that Victorian pattern one that I'm always using. You could use printed fabric, which would be adorable. Um, you could use these little markers that we're going to be using in just a minute in black, white, uh, gold, or silver. Um, you could draw absolutely whatever you want on them. I'm keeping mine pretty simple, just doing little dots. Uh, but if you're artistic, for sure, you can go ahead and um, go all out. Okay, so here's the pattern. And now I have enough for one whole petal, two pieces, and enough for another whole petal. So let's start on that. All right, this is something that I have discovered as I was going along, and that is that if you glue these too tightly closed at the bottom, it's hard to get the stuffing up in them. So I'm gonna be more careful this go around, and I'm using my Sherbonder Cool Shot Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun. It's nothing special. You are definitely going to be getting glue on your fingers doing this project, so you definitely want a low temperature glue gun. And if you don't know this trick already, this is just a dryer sheet, and these work great to clean your glue gun up, especially if it's starting to get a whole bunch of strings and globs on it. So I'm just gonna start, I'll hold this up in just a second. And I'm running a bead of glue right along the edge, okay? So I'm going to go all the way around, but I'm going to leave the whole bottom open and a little bit of the side. And you could go all the way out to the edge if you want, or just, you know, pretty close. Okay, and see, you are definitely going to get glue on your fingers. Oh my gosh, you guys, this project is so cute. I um, have been having way too much fun. Okay, let's do another one. And then we'll do the next step, and then we will stuff. So I'm just putting a band of glue, like not quite all the way out to the edge, in between the two pieces, and then I'm pinching it together, and I'm not going all the way down to the bottom because I don't want it to be super hard to get this open. Okay, so let's see, let me just set this over here for a second. All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to doodle on them. And I'm using these awesome ink and chalk paste markers from Magnolia. These are the ones that we've done a lot of different things with, including when we made these stuffed mason jars. We did all these little lines and dots and dashes and squiggly doos and 
I think that adds a lot of charm to the project. So I've decided for this go around to just use the gold one, but you could use the silver, the black, or the white, um, whatever you like. All right, and I'm going to, these guys have both a chisel tip and a round tip. And I have mine, to change it, you just pull the tip out and stick it back in the other way. I have mine just on the round tip. Can you guys see that? Okay, so I'm going to prime it just a little bit by just shaking it and pushing it down on a piece of paper or a paper plate. And then what for the design for these ones, I'm doing a little bit simpler than the one that I showed you at the start of this video. And I'm just doing dots all the way around the edge. You don't have to <laughs> have any artistic abilities to do dots. Every so often you're gonna just stop and prime your ink pen. Um, we're not going to heat set this because we're not going to ever wash this flower. But if you were using this pen, this ink pen, on a t-shirt or a tea towel or something, you would definitely want to heat set it with your iron. So that is what that looks like. Let's do this other one. And they don't have to all be exactly spaced out the same. It just, I mean, this is one of those projects that you just cannot mess up. I have been using these markers a lot lately. Um, and I love them. So, I don't know. I think they're a good investment for your crafting closet and your supplies. So, can you see how quick we just boom boomed out these? two petals. I'm going to turn the fan on in here because it's warm. All right. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to stuff them. And I don't want to smudge it all up. Okay, I think that's good enough. So I'm just going to take, grab a little pinch of polyfill and you can fill these. See, I've got this bigger opening that's all across the bottom and a little bit up one side. You can fill these little flower petals as full or not as you like. It's just completely personal preference. I don't think they need to be super duper full, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think so far? You guys, this is so cute. Oh my gosh. It is so adorable. Okay, so I have two of these stuffed. And now I'm going to bring my little cake board that I'm crafting on today back over here. And we're going to glue these shut. And I have a bunch of them off to the side that I did before we came live just so that you wouldn't have to watch me cut out and stuff all these little petals. So we're just gonna crank these out. These ones here are a little bit messier because I didn't leave as big of a hole to stick the fluff in. So you can see they do get a little kind of messy. I wanna know what you guys think when we get a little bit further along, but I think that these are some of the cutest flowers. I guess I always think that, but the cutest flowers that we've ever made here at DIY Dreaming. And I wanna know what you guys think. And I love how you could totally do this idea for any season, any color, you know, anything that you like. You can take this idea 
and totally make your own 100% unique flowers. And let me tell you what inspired me. Okay, um, so Magnolia, well, that's one of the companies that I work with. Um, they have these new wood rounds. And I thought, hmm, that could be a cute center of a flower. And then, just this last week, I'm gonna show you these more in detail in a little bit. I ordered these little spindles from Amazon, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I was thinking they were more like actual spindles, and they came, and they're teeny. I'm so sorry. Everybody in the world was calling me today. So anyways, those two things, plus this idea that I just I wanted to do flowers again today because they just make me so happy, is how I landed on this craft. And I would say that this iteration that we're doing is 100% my idea. But I invite you to take this idea and make it your own. Do it in your own colors, your own style, to go in your decor, or if it's a gift, to go in the decor of the person who would get it. So, okay, so I have all these little petals stuck. All right, then the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to cut out a piece of our fabric that we're gonna glue everything onto. And all I'm gonna do is just lay this round on a piece of this canvas deck, and I'm tracing around it so I know exactly where it's gonna sit when it's time to glue it on. But I'm gonna cut a little bit outside of that like maybe half an inch or so, third of an inch, I don't know. This is gonna be what holds our flower all together. And our flowers are gonna lay flat like this on something, but the thought occurred to me that you could also make flowers where you drill a hole in the wood and where they stand up, like in an arrangement. Okay, so this is the center of our flower. Can you guys see how um, I traced that wood round and then I cut a little ways out from it all the way around? All right, so then the next thing is the placement of our little petals. And there's no, no specific way you have to do it. I'm just gonna kind of lay them out at 12, three, and nine. And then I'm gonna experiment with putting, this flower is going to have more petals than the one before, but I think it's going to be adorable. The one I made before had seven petals, and this one will have eight. Okay, so let's start gluing with at the 12, and I'm just going to put a whole bunch of glue on here, and I'm sticking my petal so it goes a little ways inside of the line that I drew. Can you see where that line is? Let me make it a little bit darker. Because it's all gonna be covered up. It won't make any difference. But you can see how I glued it into where that line is. Because the wood round is gonna cover the very tip of the petal. And as we go along, we are going to uh, be gluing the flowers to each other. I'm just gonna make sure that it's tacked down pretty good. Okay, so I have my 12 and my six. And here's my three. Here's my nine, I need some more glue. So 
So this is the start of the flower. When you put the wood round on it, that's what gives it the sturdiness. It's really cool. I'm so glad I was thinking about what I would want to do with those this morning when I was thinking that I really feel like doing flowers today. <laughs> okay, I'm just tacking everything down real good. And then I'm gonna go in between each one of my 12, uh, three, six, and nine. And I'm gonna put a good bit of glue on the petals to hold them together. So if you are artistic, you could draw any kind of design that you want, or you could even put a word on your flower petals. I'm not so much, so I just opted for the little dots. On the other one, when, we're, when we get there, I'll show you what I did with that one. And it's cute, but for me personally, it feels a little busy. So, so what do you guys think? And stay with me, because I want you to know all about these. We'll do that um, when we get to the butterflies. And then we're gonna assemble our little sign that says bloom where you're planted. And we'll make some leaves, uh, some small leaves just out of this burlap. Okay, we're getting there with this flower. look and see how loosey-goosey are all my petals. Do they need a little dot of glue to hold them? Because they're going to be on this sign and I don't want them flopping over. Okay. All right, here's our flower to start with, that's what the back looks like. We did the circle, if, you, if you're just now hopping on, um, you might, when this is over, wanna go back and watch from the start because I'm gonna tell you everything, including the measurements uh, from start to finish and tell you what all the ingredients of these flowers are. Okay, now here's another thing. If you want, you can decorate this with these markers also. And I did, let me see, I had, I fiddled around while I was getting ready. Uh, this is what I was doing all morning. Um, I fiddled around with doing little designs on the center and I decided ultimately that it was too busy for me, but you might love it. So here's one where I just drew like a pinwheel and put some little dots on it. So if we were using that, that might be cute here. But I'm opting for this one to just do a plain round. All right, so the next thing is to actually glue it on. And I need some more glue. lot of ideas for Thanksgiving and Christmas of what we can do with these new little wood slice things from Magnolia. Um, and so I wanted to do something with them for summer. And I think these, having it be the center of this flower is adorable. I hope you do too. Okay. So, here is our flower. 
This is my style completely. It's a little bit on the plainer side. This is the one that I did before I came live. You can see that I did a lot more different kind of things with it. They're both cute. This one has eight petals, this one has seven. This one I used gold and silver pins, the ink pins. And I did, on some of them I did a dot, line, dot, line, dot, line, and the other ones I just did the dots. And then I did these center like squiggly things. So that is totally personal preference, what you like. And I guess I'm just a little bit plainer. Okay, let's make a leaf or two for our flower and then we'll move on to the butterflies. So stay with me. All right, I am, um, this is just that five and a half inch ribbon from Walmart. It's like, I don't know, 488 or something. Uh, we do a ton of flowers with these here. And I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna do it in half and I'm just gonna eyeball some leaf shapes. If these are too big, we can make them smaller. Okay, so these are my leaves. And what I would do when it comes time to put this on our sign is I would just tack a couple of these little leaves on it. What do you guys think about that idea? It totally goes with this whole na natural sort of neutral idea. Okay, so now let's do the butterflies. Let me see. I want to just take a peek and see how I'm thinking. <gasps> it's going to be so cute. Oh my goodness. You guys, I hate, have to tell you, this is going to be absolutely adorable. Here's a quick little preview of where we're going. Oops. Okay. So to make the butterflies, I did the same thing with a piece of computer paper. I just cut out what, in my mind, is the shape of a butterfly. I folded it in half so it would be symmetrical. And this is my pattern. And, ow, oh shoot, I just poked myself really good. Okay, and um, then I'm literally just going to, you, would, you need two pieces for each one, but I would just um, pin it onto my fabric and cut it out. Two, um, you need a front and a back for each butterfly. We're not gonna do that because I've already done that, so you don't have to sit and watch. Ouch, I really poked myself, good. Okay, here's the one that I was, that I did before we came live. And you know, when I prepare to teach you these crafts here at DIY Dreaming, I think um, a lot of times what I learn to do and what I learn not to do are equally important. So I learned a couple things in doing the butterflies, but let me tell you what the size of the butterfly is first. Okay, it's about five and a half inches wide, and then it's roughly four inches from the top of the wing to the bottom of the little wing. And you could make, instead of butterflies, you could make moths, you could make dragonflies, just Google uh, you know, shape of a butterfly's wings, shape of a moth wing, shape of a dragonfly wing, and that'll give you an idea of what shape you want. Okay, so what I learned with the first one is that I wanted there to be a crease in the center where the, the body's gonna be. So this go around, I'm putting some glue straight down the middle. So, can you see what I'm saying? That will help my butterfly to have a better shape. And I think we'll stuff them through the edge of the wings. So we're gonna glue the top and around the bottom.
I left a hole on the side of this side of the wing so we can stuff it and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. If you know if you have uh, stuffing if you have some of this canvas duck fabric that I'm using it seems like every day if you have um, some of these pins and maybe yes you don't have that stencil that I use but you have something different um, and some burlap you can make this project for almost nothing which is totally my kind of a project Okay. All right. So here's our butterfly. And let's stuff it. Just grabbing some of this polyfill. I'm not sure how much we'll want. And I left a big enough opening on the side of the wings that we could get our fluff in here and down to that little point. At the bottom of the butterfly which I really didn't do that with the other one I didn't do it very well because I didn't know I was learning just a tad bit more okay so I'm gonna glue the edge of the wings closed just pushing my polyfill in when it gets hot glue on it it gets hot you don't want to get a big piece of polyfill with hot glue on it in or on your fingers. Okay, so there's half of our butterfly. Can you guys see? And we did that seam with the hot glue down the center. Let's trim off some of this stuff that's poking out. If you have friends that like to do these kind of projects, feel free to sprinkle. This really is a pretty cute craft. And also, if you're feeling like, holy moly, we're rushing right into fall and Thanksgiving and Christmas already, and you're still thinking that you wanna do some more summer projects, feel free to sprinkle this uh, as well. I'm gonna do a few little fall and winter things, but it's still summer, so I'm gonna still continue to do some summery kind of projects. Okay, that's too much. Okay. Perfect. All right, so I'm just poking my fluff in Gluing the edge of that wing in. And when I'm done here, I will get you guys all the links. Uh, but let me know specifically if you want one. If you want a link to anything here. The pins, the stencil, the chalk paste. Um, I'm going to also dig out my Amazon link for these little spindles too. So here's the start of our butterfly. What do you guys think? Isn't that cute? Okay, so, and don't leave yet because we're going to still do an antennas and we're going to put the whole thing together. Okay, so I ordered this on Amazon thinking that these birch spindles, not that they were the size of a chair, but I didn't know that they would be so skinny and long. So when I got them, I immediately thought, oh my goodness. That looks like, and this this was around $10. I'll have to show you the other thing I got at the same time because it's even teenier. It was around $10 and there's 25 pieces in there. I also ordered this one and these guys are even teenier. I don't know what I'm gonna do with those. But when I saw this and I pulled one out, I immediately thought, wow, that kind of looks like the center of a butterfly. So now we're just going to glue it in this little crease here. 
on our little butterfly shape. And then we'll do the uh, antenna. Isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, adorable. Okay, so to do the antenna, where is my little, here it is. Um, this, I wish I could remember where I got it, but I've had it in my crafting closet forever. It's just a little bit of kind of thicker gauge copper wire. And I'm gonna do, I don't know, there's no right or wrong exact amount you have to do. Let's do six, inches and I'm not going to ruin my good scissors I'm going to use some of these little wire clipper things okay and then I'm gonna see if I can find the center and we're going to make a we're going to wrap this around I'll show you this is going to go on the top can you see it right here? I don't know how to make it so you can see it. I think against my top, you can see it. Around the top of this butterfly's head, it needs to be tighter. that around the top of this spindle. See that? And I'm going to put some glue on the back of this little butterfly's head. And we're going to stick our antenna right into that glue. So stay with me if you've waited this long to see this whole project. I want you to see how it all comes together. Um, all right, so I'm going to let this uh, dry for just a second before I show you how we're just going to use some little needle nose pliers to pull a, um, a curly cue. All right, and we are going to need the glue. We are going to need the scissors. So. Let's start working on this. Okay, I like the idea of my little flower hanging off the edge, and I like how I have the leaves positioned. So let's just go ahead and tack these down. When I need to remember, uh, one of my followers made this finger for me for doing working with hot glue. It's great. If that was you, tell me, because honestly, I can't remember who sent it to me. It's been a long time, but it's great to have. And when I'm all, all, all finished, I'll get my heat gun out and we'll melt the uh, little glue strings that are absolutely everywhere on this project. Isn't that cute? Yes, it is. It's adorable. We could almost have two butterflies. Oh, and we gotta decorate our butterfly. I don't know, I'm gonna do one, and then you guys can let me know if you think I need to do one more. Okay, so let's first do this guy's little antennas. And I'm just gonna take some long needle nose pliers, and I'm just going to
twist a little curly cue. Now let's decorate this. I'm thinking to go along the very same lines as the flowers and just do the gold dots. But you can see when I did this one that I did a ton of dots. So let's start with just the dots around the outside and then we'll see what we think if we need more. It would have been easier if I had remembered to do this before I glued this all together and stuffed it, but you know, sometimes you just get excited and you forget what you're doing. So these pens that I am using right now, this is the ink. You could use this on a t-shirt, on a tea towel, on a piece of ceramic and then heat set it and it would be permanent. Uh, the chalk paste pins you could use on your wood signs and that kind of thing and that would work great. So I don't know, do you think, do we, let me finish this and then you guys can tell me, do we need more dots? Like, oops, good thing I'm not a perfectionist because I just, Mess that up. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love how neutral it looks. This one has silver and gold dots on it. I think I'm gonna leave it just plain, but absolutely if you wanted your butterfly to be more elaborate, or my sisters, you could do more, more dots and so forth. I see it right here. We could even add another flower on here, but let's just start with this and we'll see what we decide to do. This chalk paste that we used looks great with the gold pen. It's perfect. And the chalk paste, in case you want to know what that color was, here it is. It is called Irish Cream Chalk Paste, and it goes perfect with this gold ink pen. I don't know how securely I need to fasten this down or not. We'll put a good amount of glue on here and see what happens.
Oh, I think it's pretty, pretty good. So I do think that we either need one more little flower right here, or we need another butterfly. And I want you guys to tell me what you think. Do we need another butterfly, or do we want a small flower? I did start fiddling around with a smaller flower that would be quite a bit smaller, but I could go even smaller to put right here. So I just want to know what you guys think. I'm just clean some of this up. Word, my desk is a disaster. So I want to show you the two different flowers that I made. This one, what do you guys think? Do you love it? Okay, I see a small flower, I see a butterfly, um, another butterfly or flower, a small flower. When I get all finished here, I will look at all of your comments and I'll count. So continue telling me what you think. Do we need a small flower, like really small, right here? or another butterfly. And tell me what you think about this project. Bloom where you're planted. Be content in the place God has you because God is good and we can trust him. Uh, do what is right even when it's hard. What was the other thing that I wrote down? Where are my notes? Make the best of what you have. They all go with the idea that God is in control and he's good. And he, is deter he has determined our path for a reason, a good reason. So we need to bloom where we are planted. And I definitely need another little something right here, which I will do this evening. And then I will get pictures and I will share it with you. How about a planting pot? Oh, that could be cute. I absolutely love all of your projects, especially this one. Oh, thank you, Tina. I really appreciate that. I can have a tendency to be a little um, plain and a little kind of vanilla, but I think the burlap leaves and the little dots and then the wood center um, make and then the wood for the butterfly make this um, have some texture have something to it other than just uh, cream color so anyways I'm gonna lay this here so that you can do a screenshot if you would like um, feel free to ask me any questions that you might have let me know if you would like the link for these awesome pins, which I'm totally in love with these now. Where did my gold go? Here it is, love these. Or if you want the stencil or this chalk paste or the wood rounds or this MDF, I can get you links for all of those. The, um, again, real quick, the burlap that I used is five and a half inch wide burlap. It's from Walmart. It's with the, with the flower the fake flower stuff. The, um, the paint that I use to paint my MDF is this. It's also from Walmart. It's Waverly Brand Inspirations Chalk Acrylic Paint. Matte finish, no prep, and this color is called Plaster. What else did I have? And then any kind of um, crafty metal that you can bend some polyfill, it could be an old pillow. Um, the, this fabric is cotton duck, also from Walmart. So you could literally just get almost about everything you need from Walmart and Magnolia DIY and you'd be good to go. I will get you guys, I'm gonna have to dig this out, the link for these in case you want to make some. And you know what? If you have some ideas for these, 
besides what I've just done, please tell me in the comments what else I could do with those. And yeah, I think that is pretty much everything. I hope you liked this project. And if you decide to do it yourself, I would love to see pictures. Um, you can share those over at Dreamy DIY or here in the comments if you would like. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything. I don't have a template. I'm sorry. I can take pictures of the computer paper <laughs> that I um, sketched and just cut out. There's nothing special about these, but I can absolutely get a picture if that would be helpful. And yeah, th those are the two pieces right here. Nothing fancy about these, but I would be glad to do that. Can you see that in here? All right, you'd place the other butterfly flying down from the top to the bottom. Oh, like this? I'm not sure. Anyways. All right, well, I'm going to let you guys, if you want to know what I have coming up next, which I have lots of good projects this week, do a this or a this. Check to make sure that you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. And if you're watching this on YouTube, take two seconds to make sure that you've uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel. Feel free to comment there as well because I do check those. And um, feel free to sprinkle or, you know, spread the news about this little flower and butterfly to your crafty friends as well. Alrighty, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. I will get this project finished and I will take pictures. I may even come live one more time to show you how I finished it off. Lulu says it's Starling Heidi. Thank you. Spindles would make cute stems for smallish flowers. I think that was Linda that said that. Great idea. I will get a picture, Gail, and I'll put it later when it's all completed. In this, in these comments, as well as in a separate post at DIY Dreaming. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.